Welcome back to Henry Hatsworth. And this time, we're taken to the rooftops. Oh. I'm pretty sure I also did a fair amount of grinding just to, to get some of the last upgrades here. You know, I think for a temp, Lance did a pretty good job of running the upgrade store. All he has to do is take my money, give me my things, and go, ha ha! Hey, it's a difficult job. It's hard on the lungs. I mean, he, he's doing a better job of that than Cole ever did, though. I know I keep saying it, but I think this is one of my favorite tracks in the game as well. So we were in the sewers and the clock tower last time, but now we are officially on the rooftops. Uh, also, for some reason, I, I thought there there is a, a bonus level later on that is in between two houses, but it's not that one. Very cool level design. I like it. Yeah, I was I was gonna wait to see if if uh, one of you two brought it up first. For some reason, this reminds me of the the opening levels of Aladdin that are still on the rooftops of Acroba. Oh, I could see that. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, th this design is basically an excuse to have a bunch of like small platforming gimmicks and challenges, you know, relatively connected. And much like Henry Hatsworth, Aladdin had a ridiculous difficulty curve. <laughs> yes, it did. Well, did, did both versions have it, or was it just a Super Nintendo one? Uh, you know, I'd have to ask about the Genesis version, but um, I would assume that they both had it. I mean, there were two completely different games, so... Yeah, that's fair. It, it's kind of like, I remember that one trend that lasted a couple of years where, uh, you know, big budget uh, HD releases would get basically completely different games on the Wii and PlayStation 2. I, Star Wars The Force Unleashed did that, I know that. Sonic Unleashed also did that? Yes. Oh, and there was also- I remember that now, yeah. There was also Dead Rising on Wii. Cause yeah, that, that was, was a, a thing port. people wanted. Or that was not a port. That was like something that came out a couple years later, from what I remember. It, it was a chopped down version. Uh, no pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no pun intended, but very much appreciated. Uh, I know they've done that for a lot more, but I can't think of anything else off the top of my head. I only just realized if you look at the chimneys, they are designed to look like top hats. Which, you know, this is a top hat, not a bowler hat. So I think Weaselby had, uh, you know, some money put into the uh, construction of this place. Hmm. By the way, those guys in the, uh, those are, those Mike Myers in the hot air balloons are terrible. <laughs> Just impossibly placed, yeah. yeah. That was a pretty good uh, dodge there. Yeah. I also like how the, this leap of faith is still telegraphed a bit if you fall onto the other side. It's not quite as terrible as the leaps of faith that we've seen in the past. However, uh, yeah, we're, we're getting a bounce pad section here and yeah, I just took the mulligan. Oh, oh, I guess you just wanted, or you were trying to refill. Yeah, just re it, refilling your health and, you know, resetting the board, so to speak. So we've got these guys. You remember them from the, the exploding slimes? I feel like they've appeared at least once a video, like, since they were introduced. They're quickly becoming my favorite characters. Yeah, they're, it's, it's been, uh, it, actually, no, it's only been two weeks between recordings, but I, I always feel like it's best to remind my uh, my fellow co-commentators about something anyway. At least get bring up the basics because these videos do come out a week apart. Oh, by the way, I promised uh, that there were palette swap pokies. You saw them briefly there, and it's also here that I ran into a very strange glitch. Uh, it's gonna come up in a couple seconds here, but this is a a piece of movement here that I'm I don't know. It's 
I don't, I think this might be speedrun movement tech that I've not seen before. So, I jump up here, and I have no idea what happened. What the heck? Yeah, I, hmm. you're not supposed to be able to jump that high on the bounce pads, and I guess it might be like a physics glitch of some sort. I don't know entirely. You'd uh, have to ask the uh, speedrunner who's watching uh, along. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I'm sorry, I cannot remember your name. Uh, Judge Fish is his name. Thank you. For some reason, I kept thinking of Judge Reinhold or something, but I know that's not right. Is <laughs> <laughs> uh, is the inverse Judge Dread the one breaking <laughs> all the rules? <laughs> yeah. If you, if you fall here, there's a pretty good chance that you'll fall all the way down, particularly with those exploding slimes. I already mentioned my thoughts on a uh, level design that has you snaking back and forth vertically, right? Yeah, at the very least, they have these solid platforms as what are essentially checkpoints. Well, it has that at least. Yeah. See, that's that's the trick of Henry Hatsworth's level design, that there's just enough of a safety net to keep you confident with while, while it just crushes you under its heel yet again. Hey kids, do you like 80s platformers? We've taken the worst design principles of all of them and mashed them into this one game and given it an E for everyone rating. <laughs> and if not, ask your older brother. Enjoy listening to your little cousin scream in the back of the car. <laughs> worst place for a set piece fight, oh, by the yeah. way. I, I was gonna say, this is a terrible battle arena. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's incredible. Still does not ex excuse this horrible arena. I feel like this was made like as like a joke set piece that one of the uh, one of the other members of the team uh, a sudden uh, accidentally thought was you know a real thing. Three minutes. I cut some of this. I cut some of this out. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Nothing can beat. Nothing can beat the the flaming enemies bouncing across. <laughs> I know. It's great. Uh, I guess I should talk a little bit about the team. Uh, I mentioned before that uh, while EA Tibiron were like the main staff, there was also uh, one of the one of the Kyles, who was a founder of the Tomorrow Corporation, uh, the developers behind World of Goo, Seven Billion Humans, and Towering Inferno, I think is its name. Um, but, uh, it's, it's not Kyle, it's Kyle Garber. Kyle Garber is the other one, not Kyle Gray. Or maybe I'm getting them mixed up. What was the name you thought you, uh, you'd, the, the, which Kyle was um, associated with? I would, I would have to look it up. Um, give me one second here. Yeah, this goes on for a while too. Kyle Gabler, World oh. of Goo. Okay, so it was... Yeah, look at this up as well. But, um, yeah, this, these are basically a another sort of version of the, uh, uh, the, the Locky 2, or the Cloud Locky 2 setup. Yeah, Kyle Gray was the... It was Kyle Gray who was the lead designer on Henry Hatch of the Positive Adventure. Um, and EA at this time had a partner's initiative for bringing in independent talent. Uh, and it was at this point that Kyle Gray was contacted because he'd already worked at World Goo at that point. And uh, he had a, a prototype involving monkeys for this game that it, it was actually pretty similar to what has been uh, presented here. But I mean, the idea is, you know, the, the British stereotypes weren't a part of the original uh, proof of concept, but the mech was. And, uh... So, what you're saying is at one time it was a monkey mech. It was, yeah, it had, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it had something to do with monkeys. There's also some beta footage, uh, it, that's, you know, circulating around the internet if you can find it. It's actually pretty similar to the final product, uh, at least UI design-wise. Um, I think the main major difference that I can remember is that the puzzle meter is on the top screen instead of the bottom. 
Hmm. And I guess they, they moved them down because players were having, you know, too much difficulty uh, trying to uh, trying to figure out which meter was which and keeping their eyes on both screens at the same time. That seems fair. It might also explain why there's a bit of like that extended tutorial at the start uh, with Cole. Yeah. They, they, they did try to organically introduce a few things, but it didn't work out. Also, that's the guy that's been shooting rockets off screen. I hate that guy. That's that that's kind of cheeky. Yeah. At least we made it through, if only by the skin of our teeth. Good show. Good show indeed. Good show. So now we're in level 5-4. Dracula's Castle, all right. Yeah, this is like one half of the Dracula's Castle portion. We will see the other half in the next video. But uh, for now, we're gonna look at this. This is a strange level. A short one too by the video timer. There's a bit of audio desync, I'm not sure. I, I I don't know if that's YouTube's fault or I could just fix it in post. Hatsworth, don't mention two worlds in this game. Anyway, yeah, this is the uh, the, the first half of Dracula's Castle or Weasley's Castle. Uh, yeah, we are officially in the end game. This is five four, and the final boss is five six. And it is a, a big, sprawling environment. It has uh, a lots of horizontal paths, where uh, the, the previous wide-open levels were more about vertical paths. We're, we're going to be spending a while here. And it's definitely got that Dracula's Castle ambiance to it. Yeah, there's a, a little bit of... I don't know if I would go so far as to like call it Wily's Castle, because there because I mentioned before, there is no boss rush. But there is, it's actually kind of like what Hideki, not Hideki Kamiya, um, Itagaki does with his games, where you revisit uh, uh, brand new levels that are inspired by previous levels. Like Ninja Gaiden Black had that. But that's, that's yeah. that is next time. This is just a, a straight up platforming challenge. It does introduce one new gimmick, which are these, uh, these, these spinning spikes, or the spike balls on chains. Unfortunately, that's pretty much the only new thing that this game brings up, so I'm just gonna show you a little montage. Breaking news, Henry Hatsworth is hot as balls, more in 11. <laughs> so this is a, just a taster of what the rest of this level is like. Which is to say this level is quite long. Yeah. I'm getting flashbacks to like that one long hallway in Castlevania 1 just before you fight death with the two Axe Knights and uh, I think it's two Axe Knights and the Medusa heads. Ah, yes. The part that's designed exclusively to brutalize. You. What the <laughs> hell was that? Yeah, yeah. what? <laughs> I know. It's, yeah. Uh... At, at least I, the hell hallway had the decency to just be a hallway, not the entire level. And by the way, that was Canyon.mid I was using. <laughs> it's it's always it always sounds like the intro to some local news program. I don't know why. Uh, it always goes back to the '90s, man. And uh, next time we will uh, get uh, World Five Five, uh, which is a long one. I split it off into its own video. Um, and, uh, we will see why that is. It, it's not just, I mean, if those set pieces at the end were like one after the other or distantly spread out, but what you didn't see in that montage was getting constantly lost. It's not spread out properly. And it is very much a, it's like a mini Metroidvania inside or not a Metroidvania, but, um, in terms of level design, it's very sprawling.
Uh, it, it's more Does like it a spider loop web back kind of onto itself just, and th- there's a bunch of paths like spread out in all directions. Oh god. Uh, the next level five five does that as well, but not nearly to the same extent. It's like they want it to be Order of Ecclesia at the end there. Wow. <laughs> well, if they, I guess, if they had enough time to put in the uh, the magic mm. sign uh, DS spells that Order of it was it Order of Ecclesia or was it Dawn of Sorrow that did that? You're the ones are you where you have to draw the. That's Dawn of Sorrow. Oh, okay, yeah. L- like I said, I when it comes to the Egovenias, I am an extreme poser, so. I just have to clear. I have to ask for clarification constantly when I'm making these references. I did play Bloodstained though. That was very good. Yeah, Bloodstained's great. 